05 Toyota Highlander 301-290 on the odometer. The engine's running. It's at normal operating temperature. I have a temperature gauge in the vent. We're at 75 degrees even. You can see my temperature is set to the right to heat. AC is off. I'm going to cut the fan on, which should kick on the heater. So we're going to watch that temperature gauge to see if it goes up. And it's actually dropping 74.5 74.3 AC again is off heat is on so this temperature should be rising and it will if I tap this dial watch the temperature 78 81 the heat kicked on, it's coming through the vent. There's a problem with the wiring behind this switch. I know what's going on because I repaired this probably 10 years ago. Let me cut the AC on. I can feel the cold air coming out. 115, 112, 110. Still dropping down to 51.6. So the AC side of this switch is working well. The heat side is not. You saw where it was not working. The heat was not working until I tapped this. So something's wrong behind there. I think it's another broken wire. Let's get this taken apart and get it fixed. This piece of trim around the outside, this silver piece, that has to come off. So to give yourself more room, you cut your ignition on, set your parking brake so your car won't roll. Move the shifter out of the way. You're gonna need something to get in between the dash and this silver trim. I'm gonna use this prying tool and I'm gonna put part of an old sheet around it to hopefully keep from causing any damage. And you've just gotta find some place to get it worked in to get it started. All right, that went well, nothing broke. And now with that out of the way, there are six 10 millimeter bolts, three on each side. Those have to come out. And be careful not to drop those bolts because there's no telling where they'll wind up behind your dash. Woo! Uh-oh, I dropped it, but it stayed right there. Hang on, that's where one of these comes in handy. And with those six bolts out of the way, this whole assembly should pull straight out. And there'll be some wiring harnesses on the back side we need to disconnect. So these three harnesses across the top, so you push those down. Where is my prying tool? Now these two down here, the release tabs are on the bottom. Now the antenna and possibly another antenna. I'm not sure what these are. This is the piece that we need to get out. This is the radio. This bracket and a bracket just like it on the other side, those have to come off. They are held in on each side by four eight millimeter bolts and two Phillips head screws. Now the Phillips head. Same thing on this side. And this is a pretty common problem with 01 to 07 Highlanders, first generation. There are a lot of videos on YouTube showing you how to do the same thing. So I'm just going to add mine to it. And this one's starting to strip, so be careful about that. Now the radio should come out. To get this back cover off, there are eight Phillips head screws that have to be removed. Three down this side, three on the other side, and two right here at the bottom. And once you get those eight screws out, don't just grab the cover and pull straight up because we have to disconnect a ribbon cable. See the ribbon cable right there moving? That's because it's attached to this bottom piece. So this is what we have to disconnect. This is the other end of that ribbon cable. I do not want to damage this because if I do, then Okay, there we go. All you have to do is pry that black piece up a little bit and then the ribbon cable will slide out. And then when we put the ribbon cable back in, we'll put the cable in and then push this down to lock the cable in. So on the other side of this little circuit board on the center control, that I believe is where the problem is. That's where it was last time. So the knob needs to slide off. There's a 10 millimeter nut we need to back off. Hold on, might be 11. It is 11. 
these two plastic tabs on either side of this little circuit board those need to be pried out while you're pushing from the other side now the moment of truth do we see broken wires I'm not sure. Let me get a magnifying glass. Hold on. I do not have a broken wire, but I do have a loose wire. See this one closest to you? See how it's broken free of the circuit board? The other two are soldered down, but this one is loose. So that's the only thing that I can figure is that because it's broken loose from the circuit board, that is causing the intermittent heat. Now you can check the other end of those wires to see if they're broken where it connects to the circuit board, but mine are intact. I do not see a problem there. So the plan is going to be to re-solder that wire on the left and probably touch up the other two as well. But I'm a little nervous about doing that because like I mentioned before, when I had this repaired eight or ten years ago, I did not do the soldering. I took it to a TV repair shop. I have very little to no experience soldering. I do have a soldering iron kit and I'm going to try to make it work we'll see all right here goes nothing and I mean nothing let's just hope I don't screw it up lost my magnifying glass let me try that again it's amateur hour for real but let me take a closer look at that I'm gonna to try to show y'all a view through the magnifying glass of what I did. Hopefully it's gonna work. It looks god awful. It looks terrible. There's definitely a skill to this, but all three wires are down securely and they're not touching. So I'm gonna put it back together and see what happens. So reassembly is just a reversal, obviously. Push this board down till it snaps in. Get the washer on and that 11 millimeter nut. And if your controls aren't working right, your heater or your AC, you might try tightening this nut first. See if that fixes your problem, at least temporarily. Be careful not to over tighten it because all this stuff's made out of plastic. And if you crank down too hard, you're going to break something. So trying to get that ribbon cable snapped back in. I'm going to grab that ribbon cable with some needle nose pliers. Try to use a screwdriver to pry that little black piece up. I don't want to force it. I don't want to bend anything. There we go. And now snap that down. It's in. Hopefully that's going to be all right. Now the eight screws. Now the radio and the bracket. Everything's back in. Get the knob put back on and we're ready. Larger antenna in the bottom, smaller in the top. And then one, two, and the last one. Let me move the camera, we'll crank it up and see if everything works. The engine's cooled off, so I'm gonna have to wait for it to heat up and then we will test the heater and see if I fix the problem. 10 minutes later, the engine is warmed up. It is 82 degrees even. I have it set to heat. Let's cut it on and hopefully that heat will come on right away. And it did. See, we're going up quick. So the heater is working already up to 112. We switch over to AC, make sure the air conditioner works. And I just heard the compressor kick on. You can see the temperature dropping. So it appears that my solder job, even though it was god awful ugly, it appears to have worked. So we're definitely dropping ACs working. Let's go back to heat. See, we're going back up 80 degrees, 83, 85. Let me tap this center dial, see if that does anything. One oh 
103. Nope, the heat stayed on. We are good. With mine, like we saw, I did not have a broken wire. I just had a loose wire from the previous repair. If you find broken wires and you don't know how to solder, I would suggest that you find someone that does know how and pay them a little bit of money to do it for you, and it should fix your problem. Last thing to do is snap this piece of trim back in. And that's it. We're done.